Okay, let's go into the word of God. This, this word I spoke last Sunday at my church, and it did so, so much. It just liberated people. And when I was coming here, I asked God, God, what do you want me to share? And I wanted to go back to the beginning of, because uh, we're talking about the year of fruitfulness. I wanted to go talk about the, the, the fruitfulness uh, that God is calling us as a church. But then God spoke to me and said, you know, speak the same message you spoke yesterday, uh, last Sunday. So I know there's somebody here who's going to be set free, healed, delivered, amen, who's going to go forward in God. God wants us to live whole. Yes. He wants us to be like that testimony of grace. Uh, it is so powerful when I was listening to her. God wants us to have to be a body who is whole. Amen? He came to set us free. Yes. He came to give us life in abundance to the full till it overflows. Yes. Amen? And we know there's an enemy who doesn't want us to live in the fullness of what Christ has done for us. But today, he's under arrest, he's in trouble because I'm going to speak the word of God, which is spirit and life, amen, and will give us deliverance. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 14 to 15. And today, as I'm speaking, I don't want you to look at your neighbor thinking, oh, this is for my wife, oh, this is for my husband. Definitely that lady at the church, this is her. I want you to just focus and let God speak to you as a human being, you and Jesus, amen? The presence of God is here. You know, when I entered, I felt the presence of God here. But I want that today, it's, it's about you. I really want you to live in the fullness of what God has for you. Amen. I really want to, and the devil is a liar. And he comes, what is my title? <laughs> All right, see? Oh. Yeah. There's some Claudia sent to me. I was like, oh my God, don't, 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 this is even the worst. But this was perfect. It's lemon, rotten lemon, and it goes with my message, amen? We are in the year of fruitfulness, amen? So today I want to talk about rotten fruits because we don't want to bear fruits that are rotten, that are not godly, Amen. So Hebrew 12, 14 to 15 says, work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look at each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out for that, that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Amen. Uh, I want to talk about bitterness today. I'm going to read from another translation, okay? In case this one we didn't get it, I'm going to read it for some another f translation. Amplify says this. Continually pursue peace with everyone and the sanctification without which no one will ever see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, that no root of resentment springs up and causes trouble, and by it many are defiled. All right? He said no root of res resentment coming up and causes trouble, and by that root many are being defiled. Amen. I'm going to read it out of the message translation. Work at getting along with each other and with God. Otherwise, you'll never get so much as a glimpse of God. Make sure no one gets left out of God's generosity. Keep a sharp eye, that's what it says, out of the weeds of bitter discontent. Keep a sharp eye out of the weeds of bitter discontent. A thistle or two gone to seed can ruin a whole garden in no time. Yeah. Right. Does that make sense now? Yeah. Three translations are enough. Amen? The fruit of bitterness can be expressed 
differently from a person to another. Amen? Some, you know, some of the fruits of, uh, of bitterness. Can I read them to you? Addiction. Amen? Lust. Pornography. Anger. Rage. Jealousy. If you find yourself in that, say, Jesus, speak to me, God. Amen? Some people with this fruit of bitterness in their life are harsh. Have you ever been around people? I mean, you like, before they open your mouth, you put a wall already because you know the word that's about to come out is very harsh. Hmm? Am I talking to somebody? People are critical. I mean, they cannot appreciate anything or anyone. Criticize, criticize. The truth, of, the truth of the matter, if you can, you know, if you want to criticize something or someone, you'll always find something. Okay? There's no person who's perfect. There's no family that's perfect. There's no church that's perfect. There's no pastor that's perfect. There's no husband that's perfect or wife that's perfect. Amen? But if you're a critical person, you know, you can't even be grateful. You know, people have a root of bitterness in them. They, they are not grateful. There's no gratitude in them. So we, we want to find healing today, amen? amen? Judgmental. Those people are very judgmental. They even use the word of God to judge. The Bible says God is the only judge. Our calling in life is to love. It's to live in peace with everyone. Amen? Amen? We don't have to like them, but you must love them with the love of Christ. Amen? People who are sarcastic. Hallelujah. All right, we're changing this. People who are sarcastic. There's some people, I mean... And it's fun to be sarcastic, amen? But sometimes there's a root of bitterness inside. Today we're going deeper. People who are hard to get along. Just don't look at your neighbor, okay? <laughs> there are those who, they're like porcupine. You know? And then there are those who are like the iceberg in the north there, cold. You can't get close to them. Mm? And different. Don't talk to me. I want to live in my world. I don't need no one. Mm? Am I talking to somebody? And sometimes it's just depression. See, we'll find ourselves in all this and because I want God to uproot so we can find healing. Amen? People have a, a self-pity mode. It's always about somebody else who hurt them. Mm -hmm. People who are touchy. I mean, you can't say anything. She's going to be offended or he's going to be offended. All these, there are manifestations of bitterness in our hearts. Only we don't know. We just don't know. Amen? And we know by, by uh, uh, scientifically that bitterness causes all kinds of sicknesses. That's why the Bible says, watch out for that poisonous root. It's a poison. It's poison your life, poison your family. Do you know how many families that are destroyed because of bitterness? So many men and women dealing with addiction, and they spend years trying to, to kill the devil, the spirit of this and that, but inside there's a root deep inside, and they are not able to get free from that. People dealing with alcoholism, people who are in, you know, in morality, and you seem like, I can't get out of it, and you love God with all your heart, and you are praying to God, to heal you or to deliver you, 
Am I talking to somebody? You lash out and you don't even know why you're lashing out? You are mean, you don't even know why you are mean? Harsh words come out of your mouth and you don't even know why they do? Not because you want to hurt people, but because there's a root deep inside that has taken a part of your heart. And the list goes on. Amen? But we want the Holy Spirit to reveal today. Because today is the day of deliverance. The day of salvation, healing, and restoration in our lives. Amen? God said he wants us to bear fruit, much fruit, and fruit that remains. The fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. That we may abound in love. That the grace of God may be manifest in our lives. That we may be free from all these things holding us back. I believe the root of bitterness in one, is one of the root that, is, that covers all other roots in our lives. Because it's, it's a poisonous root, Amen. When we deal with bitterness, we don't know we are. That's why today God is going to reveal it to us. Amen? Amen? Now, we can't speak of the fruits of bitterness without talking about where it comes from. Amen? We need to talk about the, the fruit, the root, the seed, and the soil so that we can know how God can set us free. Amen? What is the seed of bitterness? The seed comes from somebody who's been hurt. How many have been hurt in this place? Me, I can put my legs up, my hands up, my head up, everything up. Jesus. Everything, too many times. Been hurt, somebody says something has nothing to do with me, I get hurt. I'm making it light so that you guys, you know. You know, when we've been deeply hurt, we've been deeply hurt. Whether we've been hurt intentionally or not, that's not, not the point. Whether the, 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 the hurt was small or big, that's not the point. Because the heart of a human being is tender and is gentle. And if it gets hurt, it affects. And that's why we need to stop making fun of people who get hurt and you think their hurt is not big enough to be hurt. Who are we to measure who sh should get hurt or not? <laughs> I had a phone call of a young, one of my young boy in my church. It was on a Friday, he called me, crying, crying. So I started praying, I don't know what's going on, he just crying. And I pray, I pray, 30 minutes, he's crying, he's crying. So my mind is going everywhere. What happened? Dad died, mom died, what happened? He lost his job, he didn't get the paper, so you're trying to figure out anything. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna give up figuring out, I'm just gonna pray in the spirit. So I started praying, praying, and after, I said, what's going on? He's like, from nowhere, these emotions start coming. And I feel so much hatred toward my mom. I said, what? I said, yeah. He said, yes. So he's feeling bad to feel hate from his mom because he doesn't know what's going on. And I know he loves his mom with all his heart. And I know the story of his life. So, and then he starts speaking how when he was a kid, you know, his mom wouldn't give him attention. He said, I could only get attention when I was sick. So all I wanted for my mom is just to give me a little bit of attention. The same way she did with my brothers and sisters. You see how, how such, quote, quote, a small thing can affect somebody for life? I said, listen to me, son. This is just a root of bitterness. God wants to deliver you. That's all. 
okay? Don't feel bad, ashamed that you're feeling those emotions. It's because God wants to heal you. Amen. So deep hurt is the seed of bitterness. Amen. And the heart, our heart, is the soil. All right? We get hurt. Our heart is broken. And we start harboring, nurturing that pain. Because we've been deeply hurt. Amen? And there's a grace and a season where God allow us to feel the pain. Allow us to, to mourn the, 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 you know, the, the, whatever that's going on. But then there's a grace that God wants us to get rid of that. And when the grace to get rid of that is not taken advantage of, that seed becomes rooted in our heart. It takes roots. And then it turns into a root of bitterness. But today we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to, to just uproot. Am I talking to somebody? We cannot meditate, you know, foster or nurture a pain over and over and over again. Jesus came to set us free. Amen? We can live free again. You know, when I preach this message, there's a lady in my church. She said, I asked God when you're preaching to make me like a baby again. The same way I came to this world, no pain, nothing. Just to bring me back there. He said, God just delivered me and I felt like a baby again. Yeah. And we're going to believe that for, for, for us. Amen? We can't go through life, amen, without being hurt by people. We've gone through tragedies. So many people have gone through tragedies, Amen? Life hasn't been easy. We've gone through relationship that's been toxic. We've had parents maybe that did not behave right. Amen? We've gone through abuse, all kind of abuse. But today God is able to heal us. There's a grace today to heal and restore. All right? So look, I'm going to back to that Hebrew 12, 14. The Bible says, work at living in peace with everyone. And work at living a holy life. For those who are holy will not see the Lord. God wants us to, to have a heart that is sanctified. And you know, this root is so deep and dangerous that it affects even generations. Mm -hmm. Hatred, it's rooted in bitterness. You see, where we come from, Africans, there's a lot of division, lots of war, lots of tribal issues. All this is out of bitterness, Amen. Watch out the no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you and corrupting many. So the fruit is, it's going to spring up and it's going to trouble you. And when it troubles you, it troubles you, your attitude, your workplace, everywhere. Your relationships, everything. Amen? It's a poison that destroyed a whole body. Amen? And see, bitterness brings deception. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11.3, But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your mind may not be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. The devil deceived Eve. And how did the devil deceive Eve? He started asking him question, did God really say you should not eat this tree? And she started going on. And that's what we do sometimes. We just chat with the enemy. And we think he's just having a conversation. No, no, he's trying to deceive. He's a deceiver. And one of the deceptions of the enemy, he wants us to be bitter against God. So what he tried to do with Eve, tried to show Eve, God is holding out something for you. That's why he doesn't want you to eat that tree. Now, as a Christian, we don't want to say I'm bitter against God. I mean, who wants to say that? Who wants to say God, that? So he wants to bring us in a place of deception. 
You see it in marriage. My husband is not letting me do this, that's why. God, the enemy wants to nurture a, a bitter root in you. So he can destroy your marriage. And you think the enemy is your husband. You think the enemy is your, I don't know who. Amen? So the deception is, God, you're trying to hold something out on me. God told him, you are like me. You are called, you are made in my image. And the devil comes and says, no. The God doesn't want you to eat that fruit because then you're going to be like God. They were like God already. Just to bring deception. Look what God is not doing for you. Why God did you let my mom die? I don't know. We've all said stuff like that somehow, sometime in our lives. And the enemy brings deception to say, you know what? God doesn't want to do this for you. God, why did you let me go through this season and years of pain and suffering? You could have stopped it, your God. Hello? I want to uncover the deception. Right? God, why are you blessing this one, not me? Now, look at me. I received Christ 1998. And I said, God, you know when I received Christ, I said that's when my life became hell on earth. I don't know. Some of you received Christ and then everything is rosy me. I, you know, I used to say, God, it's when I received you that my life became hard. And I, I said, God... I'm going to do whatever you ask me to do. Because I want to fulfill the call of God on my life. Amen. He put me in the ministry early. God hurt so many times. Put me in a marriage early. God hurt so many times. Hello. I was bitter, bitter by ministry, bitter by everything that goes with ministry. I didn't know, right? Because now we call it, I'm hurt. Because when we call it, I'm hurt, there's no responsibility. How many people leave a church because they've been hurt? So, we say, how many people leave a church because they are bitter? So we call it hurt. Yes, it hurt. But there's a root of bitterness that's causing you to do what you do. So I used to say I've been hurt, not bitter. No, no. No, me bitter. I love God too much to be bitter. <laughs> Jesus is my Lord. <laughs> uh, so bitter called another, another bitter, until God gave me a son with autism. Mm? And then I pray and I believe God for his healing. And I have a promise for his son, for his healing. But then I get to a place where physically I can't anymore. Right? Let me just read this Bible verse before I go with that story. I know you are interested to know how Pastor Nadia is so full of bitterness. <laughs> Ruth 1, 19 to 21. I'm just going to make it plain for you through a verse. Amen? Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the woman said, is this Naomi? But she said to them, do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, which means bitter. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I just, I love her because she was very true with herself. Yeah. Right? 
and that's all we have to be transparent. She said, I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has testified against me? Jesus, and the Almighty has afflicted me. See, this is a story of a woman who lost her husband, her two sons. She had every reason to be bitter. Amen. But then she said, the Lord made me bitter. So here me, I am. I'm the woman. I did everything God wants me to do. And then I get to a place where I have to put my son at the center. Because I can't anymore. Physically. And I'm in so much pain. And I remember one day I'm sitting in my kitchen, washing dishes. And I said, do not call me Nadia anymore. Mm -mm. Call me Mara. Because God has dealt with me greatly. And I say, God, now this is not about people. This is you and me. I say, you made this happen. <laughs> I was a bitter woman. I said, God, if you didn't want to heal him, that's fine. It's your thing. You are God. You decide what to do. But why you didn't just let him stop being hyperactive so I have the capacity to take care of him? even with autism in my house. I became bitter against God. Now I'm talking to people here who are bitter against God, but they are not acknowledging it. But they live in deception. And you say, God, but you are God. Why you didn't do, why did you let this happen, God? Why did you let me go through this, God? If you're God, why you didn't stop it, God? Am I talking to the church of God today? Am I communicating well? God, I, gi I even gave my first fruit. Jesus, all of it, God. How come I'm struggling financially? Hallelujah. Amen. Today, we're going to be like new babies again. God will deliver us from all these addictions that are holding us back. We don't know why we are struggling with what we are struggling with. But deep inside is just a deep-rooted bitterness that just has sprung up in our lives. We behave the way we behave, not because we want to hurt people, but because deep inside we are suffering. And this poison of bitterness has made the church of God sick, depressed, oppressed, cold, indifferent to the things of God. Indifferent to the ways of God because deep inside we are suffering. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 29 18. I'm making this covenant with you so that no one among you, no man, woman, clan, or tribe, will turn away from the Lord our God to worship these gods of other nations. And so that no root among you bears bitter and poisonous fruit. That's how important to God. Bitterness is a danger. Amen? She said do all this, but make sure there's no root of bitterness among you. Act 8, 18, 23. How the devil is a liar. Oh. You know, sometimes we deal with, with, with the fruit, 
and then the fruit goes and then comes back, you wonder, God, why am I always dealing with the same thing? It's because the root hasn't been pulled out. Amen? Is God speaking to somebody today? Act 8, 18, 23, the Bible says, And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hand, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. The guy was just a businessman, just wants money huh? and power. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased in this matter. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this, your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For, for I see that you are poisoned by bitterness, Jesus. And bound by iniquity. This Simon has believed. You when, when you read the Bible, the, the verse before he had received Christ in, in his heart. Amen. But Paul, but they perceived that there was a root of bitterness. Amen. For you and me, okay. A um, guy who was a sorcerer, he just want to get more power. Huh? Right? But the apostle perceived it was beyond power. He said, no, 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 there's a root of bitterness here in you. You see how it can be hidden through so many things? Right? He said, I can see that you are full of bitter jealousy. The New King James Version said, I can see you are poisoned by bitterness. Poisoned by bitterness. We're going to stand up and we're going to pray. I believe the Holy Spirit reveal in our hearts. I need to worship team here. And when we uproot, today I came as a prophet of God to uproot that seed. But we need to get in a place where we recognize the source of our issue. Amen. Please stand up everybody. Because God is God of love. He's a God of restoration. He wants us to make us as new again. He wants to remove all this poison that's causing hot blood pressure, for all kinds of sickness, anxiety, all these things that makes the Christian the person of God, not living in fullness of what he has called them for. All kinds of depression, they are rooted in bitterness. So one day, God, in his grace and his mercy, he started revealing to me all these bitter emotions that was in me. And I could not believe the amount of hatred that was in my heart. Hatred for people who I had not seen in 10 years. And I was speaking in tongues full of the Holy Ghost. Mama, pastor, looking good. Am I talking to somebody? Today, we're going to forgive by faith. It's not an emotion, it's an act of faith. Amen? Because we want to remove these seeds of bitterness, this root that's holding us back. In a city, I believe Quebec, dealing with a deep root of bitterness that turned out into become a rebellion against God and everything that is holy. Because the church of God had just, the Catholic church had abused the Quebecers. That today, because of that bitter heart, because they've been hurt and wounded, they just rebel against God I believe bitterness hold back even revival it's not sin that holds back revival God has taken care of the sin
some of you by the Spirit of God. You're going to go to that place where that root, that hurt, that seed was implanted in you. I don't know when and how and who, but all I know that God was there and he's the God who loves you. He's a God who wants to restore all the wrong that's been done to you. Today, I want you to say, God, I choose to forgive. Just say it. I choose forgiveness, God, over bitterness. I choose wholeness, God over brokenness today I forgive just going to pray in the spirit and then I'm going to lead you in prayer. Amen. Those who can pray and intercede, intercede with me. Today I want you to repeat after me. Lord, today I uproot every root of bitterness that's in my heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. I uproot it. I cut it down to its root. In the mighty name of Jesus. Today I release your people God I release your people God I tear down mighty God Every work of the enemy over their life In the mighty name of Jesus I uproot every seed for the God of bitterness Over their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Every spirit of abandonment I break it in the mighty name of Jesus Every seed of hopelessness I break it in the mighty name of Jesus Every seed of rejection mighty God I break it in the mighty name of Jesus Yende kereba sondoko Haraba sana karaba sondoko Rebaba seneke Haraba seneke Every form of addiction I put it under arrest In the mighty name of Jesus Remandoko rabo seneke Spirit of pornography, spirit of immorality. I cut you down to your roots in the mighty name of Jesus. I pull you out, I pull you out, I pull you out, I pull you out, I pull you out. Yemando Korobo Seneke, Rebasondo Korobo Seneke, Yendeke Rebo Seneke, Yoke of Slavery. I remove you from the heart of your people, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Remando Koraba Seneke, Araba Sonoko, Reba Seneke, Spirit of Confusion, I rebuke you, I uproot you from the heart of your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Araba Seneke, Remando Korobo Seneke, Aramando Korobo Seneke, every cold heart, I make it warm by the power of your spirit, God. Let a heat of your spirit come and melt away. The broken heart, the hard heart, the hardened heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Rabu Bandengi Remanda Kara. 
Let the oil of gladness, God, fill the hearts of your people. Let the balm of Gilead, God, heal your people today, God. Lose them, God. I lose you from the bounds of wickedness today in the mighty name of Jesus. And decree and declare a new day today, God. A new heart, God. A soft heart, God. A gentle heart, God. Hayamando koromon deke remanda karabas and deke. Remando korobosh and a kereba. Yende keremando korobosh and deke. Rebas on the korobos and deke. Remando korobosh and deke. Harabas and a kereba. Today I decree a new thing, God. You will not be held back from the pain of your past. You shall go forward. And you heart, in your 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 heart. I'm going to ask those who need to pray to come in front. Just come run, 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 run. Remando Korobo Sheneke. Remanda Karaba Sheneke. Remando Korobo Sheneke. Remando Korobo Sheneke. Remando Korobo Sheneke. Remando Korobo Sheneke. God is not holding out anything on you. God loves you. Hayabas on the Korobos Seneke. He has good thoughts towards you. He has a good future for you. Remanda Karabash in a cave. Remando Korobos in a cave. Rebas on the Korobos Seneke. Remanda Karabas on the Ko. Yamanda Karabas in a Karabas on the Ko. Remanda Karabas Seneke. Hayabas Seneke. Today I declare you shall not live from the shame of your past. Harabas Sonoko, you are a new person. The blood of Jesus washes you as white as snow. Yemanda Karabas Seneke. Yemando Korobo Seneke Rebas Sonoko. As white as snow. A new day, a new heart, a new way of thinking, a new way of seeing, a new way of doing. Reba Seneke. Remando Korobo Seneke. Hayaba Senete. Anger is not your portion. Addiction is not your portion. Alcoholism is not your portion. Pornography is not your portion. Immorality is not your portion. Bitterness is not your portion. You are rooted in Christ. Harabas Seneke. The fruit of righteousness is your portion. I'm going to ask the pastors to come here and pray. Haya basende kere basondo ko. Re basende ke pastor G become pray. Re basondo ko. Ye mando korobo shene ke. Re mando korobo shene ke. Re manda karaba shene ke. Haraba sondo korobo shene ke. Re baba sondo korobo shene ke. Re baba basondo ko. Reba ba sene ke reba sono ko haya ba sene ke reba sata ka reba ba sono ko robo sene ke reba ba sene ke reba sono ko haya ba sene ke reba reba ba sono ko robo sene ke reba ba sene ke reba sono ko robo sene ke ye ba ba sono ko robo sene ke reba sata ka. Yeah, Remanda Karabas and the Kerebas Shodoko. 
Rebaba sono corobo seleke, ayaba sono corobo seleke, yemando corobo seleke, rebaba sono corobo seleke. I declare a new thing, God. I declare a new thing, God. Yema sono corobo seleke, rebaba sono corobo seleke, a new thing, God, a new thing, God. Yema sono corobo seleke, rebaba baba baso doko. Every broken, every broken, every broken heart be restored, God. 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 Rebaba son do corobos, 
in your in your family when you were growing up your brother was your sister was more favored than you and it put a bit of bitterness a seed of bitterness a root of bitterness inside of you that has called you to be angry by the spirit of God I uproot it in the mighty name of Jesus I uproot it in the mighty name of Jesus may the Lord favor you I see somebody you've been abused, you've been abused, sexually abused by your brother. Today I'm here to tell you that seed of bitterness is being uprooted out of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. God say forgive, 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 forgive. I'm the Lord who restores, who heals. Yield to my love, yield to my love today. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Haya basende kere basundo korobo sheneke. Reba basende kere basendeke. Reba baba basundo korobo sheneke. I feel by the spirit that somebody, you are a man, you've been abused by another man. You live in confusion. Yield, yield your heart to the Holy Spirit. Let him heal you. Let him restore you. Ribamandokorobosheneke, <laughs> Yende kiri mando korobo sheneke. Yende kiri baba sondo korobo. Remanda kara mando korobo sheneke. Yende kiri ba sheneke riba. Hayaba sheneke.
you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today I want you to say, God, I receive the bomb of Gilead today. Make me new again. Make me new again. Restore unto me all the years that the enemy has stolen from me. Restore unto me all the years the enemy has Restore, restore, restore. Restore, restore. I receive a new me today. I receive a new me today. The better version of me, God. The better version of me. The one you have intended me to be, God. I thank you for your blood that covers me. I thank you for your blood that restores me. I thank you for your blood that strengthens me. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Hallelujah. Can we give a clap offering to the Lord today? We're going to give one song of praise to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Can we do something, something? Yeah? Okay. Praise God.